What's up, y'all? I'd like to welcome y'all to Unpopular Opinion with your boy Nonchalant. Today, we're reviewing 21 Savage's new album, American Dream. Uh, Unpopular Opinion, I think I'm gonna do a little mix of mainstream artists, underground artists, and just some artists I know, local artists. But, uh, start it off. I've been, you know, I've been meaning to do this shit for a minute. I I've been doing the, uh, the review shit. I ain't stayed too consistent with it. Every time I do see a big release, I'm gonna try to make some type of comment on it. American Dream is 21 Savage's new album. This album is coming off of like his run with Drake, the Her Loss and Her Loss tour. He basically just been making a bunch of music with Drake. He been putting out features every once in a while, but he hasn't dropped his own project in a minute. I think his last project was 2018. And this album seems like 21 Savage goes in depth on his personal life um he has some references to how he grew up in the uk london i believe he had sweet ass trailer video with donald glover basically portraying him and that shit was like it was like a movie man 21 savage had a bunch of features on his album as well from doja cat to travis scott to summer walker we got little dirk on here burner boy Young Thug came on here. A Riot of Scientists came on here. So there's some there's some good features on her for sure. So when I was listening to the album, I don't think I was listening too much in order, but I'm about to go see. So I'm gonna do the review in order. When I was listening to it, I didn't listen in order. And um when you listen to an album, I feel like the first time you listen to it you should listen to it in order because sometimes there's storytelling from A to Z, you feel me? Like if you listen to a Pierre album. You want to listen to that bitch from A to Z first, and then you want to shuffle it because you just want to see the flow of the album. Like, album flow has a lot to do with how you like a project. That's why people hire people just to figure out the sequencing of an album. Sequencing is one of the most important things of a project you actually call an album because an album, people see album, they think like, oh yeah. This shit is about to be some in depth. Yeah, the first song is a uh, American Dream intro. It's just some lady like building up the story or whatever. And uh, Twenty One Savage, did he rap at the end? No, that nigga ain't rap at the end. This song is basically like dialogue to intro the album. The second song on here is All of Me. This song is more the intro song. Uh, I have too much to say about this shit. Yeah, this song, it got a cool sample. When I hear this heavy sample shit and they use like the most obvious sample, I don't really fuck with the song. But nothing was wrong with the song. And the video was cool. This was the video they had with the trailer with Childish and I think his son playing him when he was a kid. So that was cool. The video was cool as hell. But the song was just a song. Like, I ain't about to... Run that bitch back too much. He had a bar, he said, he a homebody, so kill him in his yard. That was kind of hard. Third song on this album, one of my favorites is uh, Red Run. First off, i like to say this video, probably the best video for the album. I don't know who shot it, but it was just crazy, bro. That was in London. It got this one shot in the video where it's like five people smoking a joint or whatever. And they got like a freeze frame on the joint just like staying in the air and then somebody coming up and smoking that bitch. That shit is hard. That was a cold ass edit. It was in London. It was a lot of cuts and transitions. So just fire shit and like crazy ass cars and just thousand niggas in the hood. Like shit was hard. Um, they used some good ass angles in it. And I feel like they, they did the most they could do with the environment. Like they... They, they they capture the environment that they're in really good. Like you feel like you in London when you watching the video. He had a bar on here, he said stand on business, now he laying on his back. <laughs> that was a good ass bar. I feel like this beat was like the perfect evil style beat for 21 Savage. The next song on here is NHIE with Doja Cat. I think that's the fourth song. This song had my favorite beat so far. Shit sounded like some Spongebob background music or like an old ass western film. You feel me? Like that beat 
was hard as hell. But, um, some of my critiques about this song is I felt like Doja Cat was not needed on this song. I wouldn't say I fuck with Doja Cat. She's not a bad artist. Like, I don't fuck with her, um, whatever the fuck she's trying to portray, like being a devil or whatever. I usually like her bars. She be having some shit to say. She rap a lot better than a lot of these girl rappers for sure. I just didn't like the feature. Uh, yeah, I, I, I felt like it was kind of out of place. I thought it was funny how she would say the word ad lib for her ad libs instead of saying ad libs. Like, I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying, but instead of being like, yeah, yeah, she would be like, ad lib, ad lib. Like, she kind of corny, bro. I ain't gonna lie. She kind of corny. She had one, a, a one week bar. It was like, if I feel like having free time, hit the seaside with my bitches. Like, what the fuck is you talking about, bro? <laughs> that was like the last bar of her shit like nigga what the fuck are you talking about why in the hell am i listening to you right now so yeah i just feel like she didn't really add shit to the song but this is definitely one of the most notable tracks on this album so like i, I feel like other people might like it a little bit better than me but i, I just wasn't rocking with the shit at all <laughs> this is the first song that made me like Sneaky was the first song that made me mean mug like bro I'm like okay this is the first song that made me run it back like this is the first song that felt like a OG 21 Savage song and you feel me like I feel like 21 kind of lost that element of his music now he's so mainstream, this nigga worry about getting on songs with uh, J. Cole and being positive and shit. Nah, nigga, we just want to hear you talk about a nigga getting popped if he step in the whip. You feel me? <laughs> so this was the first song that made me really feel something, bro. Like, all the other songs is cool and shit, but, like, that nigga done went industry, bro. First song that had me geeking, like, yeah, this, is, this bitch had me rocking. Slower pace, but, like, he talking his shit. Uh, the next song is Pop Your Shit. And it's funny because this is like one of the last songs I heard. Even though it's the sixth song on the album. Pop Your Shit had my favorite beat on this album. 21 Flow on this bit was godly. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. This song I had to replay about three times. It's fucked up because I was rocking with this shit until this nigga said, It smelled like gas. I think somebody pooped. That shit fucked up the whole song for me. I'm like, bro, no, man, y'all niggas got better bars than this. I thought Thug Verse could have been a little bit better. Like, I'm, I'm on this nigga head. He in jail right now. <laughs> I don't know how he did this verse. It's probably an old song, but uh, it's definitely an old song. He for sure ain't do that shit unless he got. Uh, he might fuck around with that nigga. He might have a mic in the studio somehow. <laughs> he might, and he got a studio in the prison. I think a studio in the in the in the jail cell is crazy. Yeah, Thug verse, it was cool when it came on, and then you really start listening to the shit, and I just felt like it wasn't arranged properly. Like this song could have been arranged a little bit differently, cause I just feel like it doesn't flow all together. And that'd be the thing about features, like niggas be getting features just for the name. People gotta start getting features to make a song better. We gotta get over this. Oh, you see this name, you automatically fuck with the song. Hell no, that ain't how that shit work, bro. It's about who worked for certain songs, bro. You can have a no-name nigga amplify a song more than just a notable fucking feature. And then the notable feature, you're only probably gonna like not take the shit serious in the first place. So, yeah, this shit sounded like some old shit that got resurfaced. Next song was Letter to My Brother. Uh, I don't got much to say about it. It was just a deep song about his bro in jail. I don't think I have too much to say about it. It was like an interlude. He said, they'll stand on couches with you, but they won't stand on business. No cap. No bap. Let's go to the next one. The next song is Dangerous, featuring Lil Durk. Oh yeah, I forgot to say Metro produced the one with Thug. But it's featuring uh, Lil Durk and Metro made the beat. For this song, I say 21 Savage sounded bored as hell in the first verse. Durk came in, turned that bitch up. And then 21 snapped on the second verse. He talked about uh, like girls having outside clothes on in the bed. I'm like, bro, this is some super relatable shit. And I'm like, man, it actually sounded like he was enthused in the second verse. Like, bro, if y'all really listening to this shit, bro, you can tell. Like, these niggas go in the studio, do one verse at fucking 3 a.m. 
And then they doing the next verse next week because these niggas sound like he had completely different energy after that Dirk verse came in. That Dirk verse was actually crazy. I ain't gonna lie. Dirk turned the song up for sure. You could just feel the energy shift as soon as Dirk get on that bitch. But I don't know if that shit was intentional. That's how the energy felt on this one. And just the, the arrangement of shit again is just weird on this song. I felt like the hook didn't really fit this song at all and the hook was kind of weak when you just got somebody the caliber of Lil Dirk on this bitch. Like this whole song was supposed to be turned. But like I, I wasn't really fucking with the hook. And the next song, number nine, we got Nina featuring Travis Scott. This was another one of like last songs I heard. Even though it's like the ninth. I love this beat a lot, except for the vocal chop. Like the vocal chop on this beat is just excessive as hell and just doing too much for me. And I just like simpler beats. Like I don't I don't like when people have to combat that vocal. It's like too much vocal going on, you feel me? But that's just me. That's the real in-depth. Travis verse is hard as hell. I think he started off this song and he was doing some irritating shit in the intro. I'm just like, bro, nigga rap, man. Like, you niggas be trying to put too much extras on the song. and it's like, I don't know, they just be bored of doing the same thing in the studio every fucking day. Or, like, they just be wanting to start the song off with something. But I'm just thinking, like, nobody want to hear whatever the fuck you talking about right now, bro. Uh, the next song is See The Real. See The Real, low-key, was, like, my top three songs on this album. I don't think it's going to be, like, one of the biggest songs from this project because it's just him on it. But... His flow on this song is probably better than his flow on any other song. He got like a, almost a Drake flow on this song. I couldn't say anything wrong about this song. Like the hook was sweet to me. Everything flowed right. The arrangement was perfect. His vocals matched the beat perfectly. Like everything was just perfect about this song. Like See The Real was low-key one of my top three songs. I want to say top two, but hey, this, this is top two. This is my top two songs for sure. Right, that's why this is unpopular opinion because I don't think other people would be like, yeah, See The Real was that one. So yeah, See The Real, that's one of my favorites. Next song is Prove It with Summer Walker. This beat right here, nuts. <laughs> Like, I'm not always the biggest fan of 21 Savage on, like, R&B side, but this song right here is tough. The beat is crazy. This is more like a song for the girls. Summer Walker verse was kind of weird for me. Like, I gotta get used to her style, I guess, but her verse was kind of weird for me. His chop flow with her in the background was just perfect. Next song I heard on here is Shoulda Wore a Bonnet with Brent Fryas. Hopefully I said his name right. Yeah, this is just another song for the girls. Beat was cool, but I didn't like either one of their flows. Brent got an unconventional flow for sure. So I, I don't know. This, this is just a song for the girls. But it was a notable feature, so I felt like I should say something about it. Uh, uh, Just Like Me with Burna Boy. This was one of the first songs I heard somehow, even though it's at the end of the project. Yeah, I just, I don't think the song was for me. The, my favorite part was the hook. And the sample, but I don't like how the beat was transitioning back and forth between 21 and Burner Boy. Because Burner Boy was on a completely different beat than 21 Savage. This was like they both did their own song, and then you just chopped that bitch in every section and just grouped it together. And I wasn't fucking with that. This shit don't sound like a song. This shit sound like three songs put into one. I don't want to hear that shit, bro. Red Sky, I was just about to say this shit ass, but like, I see what he was trying to do. This is like, Concert vibes with a real rock band. Like he tried to come that. This nigga tried to come uh Wu Tang. <laughs> this nigga trying to go uh he trying to go world tour, you feel me? And Dark Days is the last song with Mariah the Scientist and the beat on here is smooth as hell, man. This song got some good storytelling. Uh Mariah sounds super good on the hook and her part. But when she was rapping, 21 was like doing ad libs and like rapping over her shit and like talking. Like nigga, shut the fuck up. Mariah going in right now. Mariah was going in. And 21 was like, oh yeah, oh god. 21, 21. Nigga, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Larry get her rocks off, man. But shit, man. That's the last song. Um overall review. Uh off my first listen. I get this project. 6.5 out of 10. Yeah, I'm gonna be a little tough on this project. 6.5 out of 10. After I listened to this shit for the first time, I didn't see much replay value. Like, first listen, 
it didn't make me want to listen to this project again. Like, it had some notable tracks that I would go back to just because they stood out. But on first listen, I feel like it should make you be like, oh shit, what the fuck did I just hear? Let me re rock that. Let me, you feel me, replay that bitch. I didn't even feel like listening to that shit at all. Like, it felt hard to just get through the project and there's only 15 songs. So, on first listen, my first listen rating is 6.5 out of 10. Replay value. I'm gonna give this shit a 3 out of 10 on replay value. Because all these songs sound like old 21 Savage songs, but worse. So, yeah, I'm not replaying none of this shit. 3 out of 10, bro. Um, Compared to their other projects. I am over I was better than this. I think this might be his worst project. It is not bad. It's just not good. Damn. But he got some good projects. This is not better than this album. This is not better than Savage Mode. This is not better than I Am I Was. This is not better than Without Warning. It might be better than Savage Mode too, but it's definitely not better than Her Loss. Damn, that's fucked up. But to compare it, compare it to other albums, he done dropped this bitch is like a, it's like a three out of ten. <laughs> this is his worst album. Damn. Lyrics. I'll give his lyrics on here an 8 out of 10 because he, he still got the, the street side to him even though he trying to go the industry route. Like, he still got them street bars. He's still talking that shit on here. He got some real good punchlines. Every song on here got some cold punchlines. Like, undeniably. Like, even if I do want to talk shit about here and say he not talking about nothing, he got some cold punchlines. So, I'll give him that. I'll give him 8 out of 10 on the lyrics. And album flow... Uh, I think I'll give him an 8 out of 10 on album flow again because when it comes to marketing, um, rollout, and just like he took the, the the story element and really put a story to this album, made a movie trailer for this album. I, I think I, did, I think he did a good job sequencing this project for sure. Everything kind of made sense. He had an interlude, uh, a good intro song, and then he kind of wrapped everything up. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him 8 out of 10 on album flow. He did pretty good. So yeah, that's going to wrap up my first album review of the year. Unpopular opinion with your boy N.N. N. Shout out to my boy 21 Savage. Shout out to Kilton. Shout out to Godly. We out this bitch.